Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. Why did the armies of the British East India Company mostly comprising of Indian soldiers win consistently against the more numerous and better equipped armies of the then Indian rulers? Give reasons. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The company became India's dominant power following victories at the battles of Plassey, 1757, Wanwash, 1760, and Baxa, 1764. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. Each of the company's three presidencies Bengal, Bombay and Madras maintained its own army. The company troops superior European training and weaponry enabled them to defeat Indian forces many times their size. At Baxa, 1764, for example, around 7,000 company troops defeated nearly 40,000 enemy soldiers. Number 2. The company was quick to combine Western weapons, uniforms and military training with Indian martial traditions. In a society where warriors were well respected, it could always attract new recruits with the prospect of good pay, pensions, land grants and honoured status. Number 3. During many campaigns, due to a system of subsidiary alliances, the company's armies were assisted by the forces of Indian princely states. Conclusion of the answer is These are the reasons why the armies of the British East India Company won consistently against the armies of the then Indian rulers. Question number 2 Discuss the role of the National Commission for Backward Classes in the wake of its transformation from a statutory body to a constitutional body. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. National Commission for Backward Classes, NCBC was set up in 1993. But 102nd Amendment Act of 2018 conferred a constitutional status to the Commission. Thus, after the amendment it ceased to be a statutory body and became a constitutional body. The main body of the answer should be Benefits of transforming NCBC from statutory body to a constitutional body. Number 1. It made the NCBC on the par with that of the Scheduled Castes and Tribes Commission, and give powers to Parliament to designate castes as OBCs. Number 2. Under the old NCBC Act, the Commission merely has the power to recommend inclusion or exclusion of communities in the OBC list now it has become more powerful. Number 3. NCBC has helped the backward classes people fight atrocities, against them and ensure quick justice to them, as it has given the power of civil court. Number 4. The new Act has acknowledged that in addition to reservations, BCs also need development. While giving NCBC constitutional status is a step in the right direction, however, it will not be enough to improve the socio-economic condition of the OBC community and along with this number of other steps are required such as. Number 1. Proper representation of backward classes of the deprived sections to join the national mainstream. Number 2. Caste census and implementation of reservation accordingly. Question number 3. How and to what extent would microirrigation help in solving India's water crisis? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. India is facing a harsh water crisis due to increasing corporate oblique sign privatization, lack of proper government planning, industrial, and human waste. The agriculture industry is also the merge or cause of the crisis. In this perspective, microirrigation is seen as a solution. The main body of the answer should be microirrigation can increase yields and decrease water, fertilizer, and labor requirements. By applying water directly to the root zone, the practice reduces loss of water through conveyance, runoff, deep percolation, and evaporation. It can help reduce overdependence on monsoon and vulnerability to drought. It can address the needs of dryland farming. 
However, microirrigation cannot ameliorate water stress due to poor agroclimatic choices in crops, such as sugarcane and paddy cultivation in Rajasthan. Also, the affordability of microirrigation systems would be a challenge for small and marginal farmers. Note, precision farming will usher in the next agricultural revolution. Microirrigation can serve as a stepping stone toward making farming more sustainable, profitable, and productive.